As the time the soldiers were started, Nigeria's first military coup d'etat in January 1966 stopped firing. Many of the nation's leading politicians and finest soldiers were already dead. In fact, the commander of one brigade Nigerian army in Kaduna, Brigadier Samuel Ademulegun, was shot dead in his singlet while in bed with his pregnant wife, Latifa. Sisi Nos, as she was fondly called, was also killed with her unborn child while clinging to her dear husband. The Prime Minister, Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, Premier of Northern Region, Sir Amadou Belu, Premier of Western Region, Chief Samuel Laduke Akintola, and the Federal Minister of Finance, Chief Festus Okote Ebo, all met their end in that bloody, brutal and cold morning of January 15, 1966. The military was not spared as well. They commanded Sioux Brigade Nigerian Army, Apapa Lagos, Brigadier Zakari Yamai Malari, the Acting Chief of Army Staff, Army Headquarters, Colonel Kor Mohammed, the Adjutant General, Lieutenant Colonel James Yakubu Pam, and the Commander of Fort Battalion Ibadan, Lieutenant Colonel Abogo Lagema, were the fine senior military officers whose career met a bloody end. Not forgetting Ademulegu and his deputy, Colonel Raf Shodende. In fact, Shodende's wife was shot in the leg. In addition, quartermaster of the Nigerian army left that Colonel Arthur Chinyelu Unegbe was also felled in the presence of his pregnant wife in a hail of bullets. However, the most senior military officer in the Nigerian army, Major General Johnson Thomas Agui Ronsi, was not killed. He had survived the bloody carnage, as he was also targeted to be gunned down by the cool plotters. Not only did the Rossi escape death, he also rallied some troops loyal to the government and subsequently crushed the coup. On the cold, chilly night of Friday, January 14, 1966, at 11 Thomas Avenue, Ikoyi, Lagos, a party among the senior military officers of the Nigerian army was going on. All the senior officers were there. The party was at the home of Mai Malari. The brigade was welcoming his new wife from Kano to the south. Ironsi, as the general officer commanding GOC of the Nigerian army, was there. Colonel Kurukur, Mohammed, and Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon, who was to take over the 2nd Battalion in Ikeja from the outgoing commander Lieutenant Colonel Ilari Unjoku, were among the senior officers that were there as well. The officers, the guests, and everyone present all had a good time, but an hour before midnight, the senior officers left the party, including Ironsi. But while they left to the rooms, Ironsi didn't. He went to another party. It was a Friday night. The general was not in a hurry to leave for home. Since my Malari's party ended quite early for him, Ironsi left for another party on a ship at the Apapa Wharf. Now, Agui Ironsi was a lover of drinks, and being in another party would satisfy his desires for that night. However, when the mutineers led by Major Donatos Okafo came for the GOC at his official residence house, the general was conspicuously absent and his guards resisted the soldiers who left him with their mission unfulfilled. At the time he rose to return home from the second party, he had received two phone calls which alerted him on the ongoing military rebellion in Lagos. The first was from Palm's house, while the second was the residence of Prime Minister, who had been abducted by Major Emmanuel Ifejuna, my Malari's chief of staff. Swinging into action, Irosi headed for Ikeja to battle the rebellious soldiers. With the support of Njoku and Gowon, they crushed the coup as the rebels fled Lagos. As a result, Agui Irosi was the only senior officer on the max men's list of casualties in the January 15, 1966 coup d'etat who survived the onslaught. However, Irosi himself would later be killed six months later in another coup d'etat which was bloodier than that of January. 
Well, that's a story for another time.